What's going on, everybody? This is Clint with the Die Hard MMA Podcast. This podcast was filmed exclusively for Odds.com. Be sure to click the link below. Check it out. We've got everything that you need over there. We've got you covered for every sport. Thank you so much for the support, and good luck on all your action this week. All right, here we go, here we go. Women's Bantamweight co-main event here. Ketlin Vieira taking on Yana Kunitskaya. Um, I'll let you lead this one off, James. Talk, talk to me about these. Yeah, female, so in the big women's. fight for the for the division. I'm a little surprised to see this as the co-main event, but I almost see this as them trying to say, like, maybe you fight Nunes next, the winner of this. I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll see sort of what they're thinking, especially in Caitlin Vieira's case. She had the title shot in her grasp, but then she got knocked up by Irene Aldana. So let's look at this a little bit closer here. Caitlin Vieira, 11-1 record, just the one loss to Aldana. I was at that fight. I couldn't believe that Aldana finished her in the first round. All the credit to Aldana. I think a lot of us underestimated her leading into that fight. Um, but Vieira still has some good wins. So Jara Eubanks. I know Eubanks doesn't have a great record, but she is a very strong bantamweight. She was able to control her, get the win there. Had the win over Katz and Gano before that. Had the win over Sarah McMahon. So, um, you know, some pretty good wins for, for uh, Vieira in this fight. She's 29, foot eight with a 68-inch reach, taking on Kunitsakaya, who's five foot six with a 68-inch reach. So uh, the reach is the same. A little bit taller there for uh, for uh, Vieira in this fight. Uh, Kunitsakaya, I believe, for this camp is at American Top Team with her boyfriend, Tiago. Santos. So I think that's a good move there. There's a lot of women training there with like, like Nunez, like, um, you know, Marina Moroz. There's a lot of uh, fighters there training. So that should be good. She was at extreme couture before that. She's coming off the win over Solarenko uh, in her last fight, which is the decision. The fight before that against Aspen Ladd, if you guys remember, um, you know, that was a fight which was kind of even going into that third round. In fact, I think you could have almost, um, you know, given an edge there to Kunitsukai in that fight. And then Ladd just came out of a bat of the hell. Her, her boyfriend slash coach, Jim West, was like, look, you got to get the finish. And of course, that's what she did. Aspen went out there and took care of business but Kunisakai has got some good wins like Marion Renault. I know Marion Renault's you know a little bit older but still a good win for her in that fight Lena Landsberg was a good win had the debut against Cyborg who's going to win that debut nobody right so um <laughs> I think Kunisakai can still be very dangerous yes she has some stoppage losses earlier in her career but I, I think she's really coming to her own I think this line should be a little bit closer to be honest I, I do I am going to side with Vieira in this fight I think she knows what's at stake here like I said she's a co-main event I think she sees this as a potential opportunity to fight for a bantamweight title here next. Um, do we see a finish in this one? I don't think it's likely. A lot of the last couple fights for Vieira, including Katzengano, including Eubanks, have gone the distance here. I would look at Vieira potentially by decision to get some uh, better odds on this one, uh, which looking at it right now, are we getting plus money on that? We will see. Uh, Vieira wins uh, by decision is minus 125, so a little bit better than that almost 3-1 to one odds there for Vieira. But I think on paper, Vieira is the better fighter. What do you think on this one? We're going to line up again here, James. We're going to okay. absolutely line up here. Vieira is uh, coming from Nova Uniao, a, a, a gym that really fell off, you know, after their stars kind of died out and they're, they're surging back and they seem to be surging back with the women. And you know what? She's big. She's big for the division, and that's something that, that means a lot when it comes to this particular matchup to me. I'll, I'll talk about that here in a minute. She's extremely heavy on her punches. She has a nice active range-finding jab, and she's got a hard right hand, big, big power in her right hand. She's willing to stand in the pocket and brawl that bit her, her one loss in the UFC, but she was fighting, like you mentioned, a fighter that we all absolutely overlooked and underrated in that spot. Nobody really saw that coming. She has excellent timing on her level changes, and she just got her Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, James. She just just got upgraded to the level of black belt and a Novo and Yao black belt is not a McDojo black belt. That is a good <laughs> solid black belt. So we can respect that. Yana Kunitskaya, like you mentioned, is Mrs. Tiago Santos. Good place to be, good training partners, and she likes to bully her opponents. That's her whole thing. Kind of like Holly Holm. She digs for the underhooks. She presses you against the cage. She'll make it as boring as she wants it to be, but she scores with those knees in the clinch, little peppering shots, and just holding you there. She's willing to grind to fight out. The only problem with Yana Kunitskaya, James, is she's got a 33% takedown defense rating. Even in the fights that she wins, she finds a way to her back. Even in the fights that she is dominating, at some point in every single fight, she is laying on her back with her opponent in a control position. I did the tape. I went back and I watched it. She always gets taken down. Ketlin Vieira lands 2.02 minutes, uh, 2.02 takedowns every 15 minute fight on average. So she's averaging more than two takedowns every single time she steps in the cage at a 52% accuracy. So that's a decently high takedown rate with a fantastic accuracy because you'd expect that accuracy rate to be a little bit lower considering how many takedowns she is shooting. That's huge for me here. I don't think that Jan is going to be able to bully Ketlin because as I mentioned at the start of this breakdown, Ketlin is massive. She's big, she's strong. And if you can't bully Ketlin, 
she's going to take you down. With that 33% takedown defense rating, this puts this thing on the ground with Ketlin on top and that black belt being a massive factor. I think Ketlin Vieira can win this thing by decision. I think she can win it by knockout. I think she can win it by submission. I think all the points of victory are on Ketlin Vieira's side. And because of that, she's one of my favorite pieces on the card. I have parlayed her, James. I've put her in a parlay with somebody a little later on in the card, considering we've only got one fight left to talk about. I may have tipped my hand on who I've got her parlayed with, but the pick for me is different, definitely Ketlin Vieira, and I actually have a half a mind to sprinkle her a little bit inside the distance because I think she can manage to find a finish here. Yeah, agree with all those points here. Hate to make everyone kind of boring watching this right now, but that's pretty much how I feel about this fight. She's the favorite for a reason, and money is coming in on her for a reason. I think this is a good spot for her. Now, Ketlin Vera inside the distance is plus 325. So I may just have a taste of that little action.